The Substance is an instant classic and I do not throw that around lightly. In fact, I don't think I've ever actually said that, but there are so many things in this film that I believe will stand the test of time and make this a memorable standout film for years to come. The Substance is a brand new 2024 horror drama dark comedy. For some reason, IMDb has less as a dark comedy. I'm not 100% sure I agree with that, but maybe I'll let you be the judge. This is directed by Coralie Farge. I'm probably butchering that name. It's a French name, but this is the director of the film Revenge that came out a few years ago. Now, that was a very okay film, in my opinion. It had lots of issues, and the overall writing and directing just felt very amateur. You could tell it was a uh, debut feature film, in my opinion, and that's not to say that it was necessarily bad. I just, there were lots of flaws and shortcomings, but I'm happy to say that I believe for her second film, The Substance, it she shows like she directed directs this film as if she's been directing films for decades, and this does not feel amateur in any way. In fact, it feels absolutely top-notch, super tight direction, very good writing. The Substance stars Margaret Qualley, Demi Moore, and Dennis Quaid, and the nature of this film, reviewing it absolutely requires me to talk about spoilers. For some reason, The Substance managed to somehow make a trailer that was highly engaging and enticing and made me want to go see it but actually didn't really give very much away at all. So let that be your warning. If you have not seen The Substance, I highly recommend just going in blind. Don't watch any more. Don't watch any more reviews. Don't watch any more of the trailers, even though the trailer does just an absolutely phenomenal job of, I can't say this enough, making the film look good and making you want to go see it, yet not giving things away. And boy, if that's not an art in itself these days, but as I said, the, from here on out, there will be spoilers. All right, let's kick things off with the positives. And first thing I wanna talk about here are the performances from everyone in this film. Absolutely top-notch, stellar performances. We've got Demi Moore in a fantastic performance, a very layered uh, performance, and I think a different performance for her. I haven't seen her in anything in a really long time, and she just absolutely knocks, knocks it out of the park here. And then Margaret Qualley, our Qualley, however you say her name, I'm sure I'm butchering it, but she's absolutely phenomenal in here also. And a very, very interesting performance right along to me more because of course they're having to be sort of different versions of the same person, but I think that they both do such a phenomenal job at really hitting home those themes of sort of the older version of yourself and the younger version of yourself and sort of the selfishness of both, but sort of really still tr doing a good job of feeling like it's the same person. I think that I can't put my finger on anything specific that they did that I can think of, but it genuinely did feel to me like, and I thought this was going to be an issue based off the trailer, but I feel like they did a great job feeling like kind of a unified person, yet split entirely differently, you know, very different generations, very different motivations. And, you know, of course, all tying into the themes of the film, yet somehow not making me think uh, each time that this is a different actor. I really felt like, okay, they were embodying the same person, the same, you know, character traits. And I can't exactly, as I said, pinpoint how they did that, but just phenomenal performances. And Dennis Quaid here, also phenomenal performance. He does just absolutely amazing job of being this repulsive, disgusting embodiment of everything that is behind the scenes for these like beauty standards and these men that are, you know, pulling the, pulling the strings and firing people and just keeping up, trying to keep up with these ridiculous standards that people just absolutely cannot live up to all the while, not embodying that at all, being just a repulsive, disgusting, the teeth and the smoking and just the absolute like, you know, walking contradiction of the concepts of of Hollywood and the modeling and the beauty industry and just the juxtaposition between the uh, insanely high standards of what it's like to be in front of the camera and what it's like to be behind the scenes. Let's talk about the big one here, the practical effects work in the substance. And boy, is it absolutely top notch. There are a few moments that take me out of the film, which I'll get to in my negatives, but the things that they pull off in the, the substance are not only look incredible, 
but the design work and I think this is very important to separate films like Terrifier and some of these other films from films like The Substance. I think there's a really key thing that The Substance does that a lot of other films don't. And this is what I kind of hark on sometimes when I go see a film like that and I don't really understand why people rave about them so much is that the practical effects and the gore and the body horror ties together with the motivations of the film. It's It all goes to show don't tell it all serves a purpose and it's not just gross out just to shock the audience yes of course it does that and of course it leans into that a little bit towards the end but it all is serving a purpose serving the theme and the concepts of the film so when you get these like gross out moments like even just needles in the arms needles in the back festering sores you know, uh, stitch, suturing up or stitching up, man, whatever that's called, the skin of the back of Demi Moore when she gives birth to herself and back, all of that is not just there to be, hey, look, it's gross. Like certain films, as I have mentioned before, where it's like it's not tied to reality. I feel like that in a violent nature, everyone was talking about that kill. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not grounded in reality at all. It doesn't feel like I'm even in the real world, they feel like jello, you know? And that does nothing for me. In this film, they really have it tied in with the characters' choices and their motivation, as I said. So it, every, every like stab, every bloody mark, every like grotesque body dysmorphia and everything that goes on in here feels very connected to the emotions of the characters and what they're doing. So it, in my opinion, it makes me feel everything so much more and it, it makes a, a sticking a needle into a back do 10 times more than, you know, sawing off a limb and having blood shoot everywhere because it actually means something in the film. I couldn't help, of course, like many people probably, to make connections with John Carpenter's The Thing once you get to the end of the film. And that's not to say that it's like ripping it off by any means. It feels very like inspired by The Thing while still making it its own. And as I continue to mention, it's not just a monster for the sake of a monster. It is a very specific, you know, trajectory of this evolution of the body and the body like dysmorphia and the, the things that you will go through in the beauty industry and how you will do insane things to, you know, create irreversible changes to your body in this attempt to seek perfection and this beauty, like, standards that we can't keep up with and I, I love that just the the momentum of the film and how you go you starts off so small and it becomes just so extreme to the point where it's like you know Demi Moore's character is like I can't turn back now and I just the the evolution of the creature just makes the payoff so much better in the end for me because it's not just like oh look there's just crazy monster that this virus or this whatever uh substance turned her into it's not that it's this really this evolution of the character in their emotions as well as their physical transformations and what they will sacrifice and do to keep up with these high standards and to be loved by people and to fit into this unrealistic idea that we this mold that we create for them and how you will sacrifice so much to fit into that and go so far to a point where, you know, you literally become unrecognizable to yourself and others. And that, to me, is like the key thing that makes the substance so much more than just a creature, just a body horror film, and make it makes these practical effects just stand out and I think, and as I said, will be a classic for years to come. Real quickly, I just want to mention the very beginning of this film and how the Hollywood star design and like the creation of that turning into the cracking and the way that people treat celebrities in the world all on its own is just a, an amazing short film by itself and just a crazy feat of amazing storytelling with one crazy cool camera shot and telling just basically the entire concept of the film 
in this short opening sequence. That being said, let's get into the cinematography and oh my God, is this film absolutely gorgeous. And there's so many unique shots in here. I feel like the substance specifically, and I'm not going to be able to verbalize exactly what I mean, but there's something about the way the substance is shot that I feel is lacking in films these days. It's not, in my opinion, to put this the best way that I can, I feel like the substance is not showing you beautiful frames for the sake of beautiful frames and like long shots that don't serve the purpose of the film. I feel like the substance is shot absolutely beautifully in a way that really serves the film. There are a few shots here and there that I do feel like were a little bit gimmicky and not, again, this is not necessarily a negative thing, but they felt like they were a little gimmicky towards the beginning, specifically Dennis Quaid shot at the urinal, really cool shot, but I feel like it was not necessarily serving the purpose of the film 100%, but then the rest of the film, it it's just feels like that's lacking a lot in modern horror films where you get a lot of beautiful shots and unique ideas, but they don't always connect. Sometimes they almost pull you out of the film and they don't feel like they're serving the storytelling as much. With the substance, I feel like every shot is very, very fundamental to the storytelling and it doesn't take me out of it. I'm not, like I was able to enjoy the beauty of the way it was shot without consciously thinking every frame. Well, that's a cool shot. Oh, that's a cool shot. There were a million frames in this film that I kept thinking were beautiful and a unique way to, to shoot it, but the film was so engrossing that I, and again, as I said, it was serving the storytelling that I wasn't left thinking, okay, that's cool. And like looking at just how everything was shot, I was immediately sucked back in every time I would think that's a gorgeous shot or that's lit really cool. It just felt like, boom, I was right back into the film. You know, it wasn't like distracting me, if that makes sense. So real quickly, I'll just talk about some of the themes that are in the substance. And I have already mentioned, of course, this obvious like beauty standard and the, this crazy, you know, high demand to be uh, keeping up with these trends and staying young, as well as the sacrifice that you will give up and the things you will do to try to keep up, to try to stay relevant, to try to fight off aging. But also, of course, I love this idea of this just contrast between your younger self and your older self. I really loved how both of the younger self and the older self were seeking this impossible standard and trying to stay in the limelight and trying to be famous. Also, trying to be loved and seeking love and attention in all the wrong places. And I think that we saw that both with Demi Moore's character as well as uh, Margaret Qualley's character and how they both were seeking love and attention in the wrong places, in the wrong ways, but differently. I love that contrast and I love that concept of as you age almost like sort of being so like fighting against your younger self and the motivations of what you wanted and what this young version of yourself is trying to, to keep up with as well as what this older version of yourself wants. And I love that just like contrast between the two. In addition to that, I really, really loved the juxtaposition between just these impossibly high beauty standards. And there's this moment at the end, especially where, you know, uh, Margaret Qualley's character is her teeth are falling out and she sees the stockholder, the shareholders, and it's just a bunch of copy and paste old men with the same haircut, same suits, just all like literally standing behind Dennis Quaid. And I love just that visual representation of these are the people behind the people that you are trying to please. This is what you are sacrificing your life your livelihood, the surgeries, the poisons you put in your body, the insanely high standards, the diets, the crazy working hours, the just all these things that you sacrifice, the lives, the, your emotional emotions. This is what you're doing it for, is these people. This is what you are. This is the people controlling. These are the people that want to see these beautiful women on screen. These are the people that want more. And these are the people that are feeding 
the audiences and saying this is beauty and I just love that like it was a just obviously there that theme is running through the film but that moment in particular really tied everything together for me and I love that concept of her just like fake smiling and putting on this show for it's like this is who you're doing it for and this is what you're sacrificing everything for is these disgusting people and this just copy and paste you know generation after generation the same type of person i love that visual representation representation and it just absolutely hit the themes home for me there also of course the exploitation of the the beauty industry and i love the again a way that they did such a good job at showing how they would exploit a certain generation of women and then this newer generation has to be more extreme more intense more sexualized and just keep up with the standards and how that was you know jurassic whatever they said jurassic whatever the term was she said but i loved that concept of even showing how it's changed and evolved and how it's even more demanding you have to be more perfect more sexualized and you can't even keep up with it, like just doing what they did year, a couple years ago it, even in the course in the film obviously it's it's shown to be kind of more like 80s versus modern time i feel like showing like just the exercise videos type of thing the morning show with Demi Moore versus when Margaret Qualley takes over but in the film it literally is like two days you know the change between one to the other just shows like the rapid evolution of the standards and keeping up with it and how you have to do more and more and more and it's more sexualized and more extreme and more intense and more exploitative to keep up with the demands of these people behind the scenes and what they want now this could just be me getting something out of this film i think that there's so many themes and metaphors there's a, a ton in this film that you could pinpoint i mean it does a lot in a very um simple way obviously th this again i'm gonna i keep saying but i feel like the substance does what a lot of films should be or are trying to do these days where it tries to do a lot but it sticks to one kind of main theme and tells all of its other metaphors and themes through that, which I feel like a lot of films like Maxine and X, I just off the top of my head, kind of fail to do. They're trying to say a lot, but they focus on too much. And so you're kind of like, you got a lot of little threads that are trying to say things about the industry, about Hollywood, but they don't come full circle. And I feel like the substance really understands it sticks to one core concept and tells a lot through that one core concept. Now, as I said, this could just be me, but I got a lot of this sort of, I don't know, respecting where you came from, respecting elders, respecting maybe the people who sort of led the path for you years ago and understanding that you wouldn't be where you were if it wasn't for the people who sacrificed to get there now it's a very unhealthy sacrifice a very unhealthy obviously standard of beauty in hollywood and stardom but i did i got a little bit of that just sort of respecting your older self and respecting your younger self respecting maybe your parents and a lot of the people who just sort of led the way for you now i i kind of I got that in sort of filmmaking standards too. Like I felt like there was sort of this like love for the people who created these body horror films and these concepts of, you know, doing sort of like social commentary horror, similar to John, Com John Carpenter's films before and sort of respecting those films. Now I could be making something out of nothing. I don't know if that was intended, but I got a lot of that when I was watching the film. And so I really appreciated that. So it was almost... It's like trashing the industry and the standard while also saying, hey, like we do need to respect these people who have pointed out these things that have been problems for years before us. I'm not the first to come along and point out this beauty standard, insane like Hollywood problems and these, these things, this the psychological impact that it has on your your mind and the sacrifices you make. I'm not the first person to do it. I'm not the first person to do social commentary horror 
And I feel like it was like respecting the people who came before, but yet creating your own path and trying to be unique at the same time and still reminding people that these things are evolving and changing. They haven't stopped. They're still there and we haven't done anything about that. All right, so let's get into the negatives of things I did not like about the substance. And while I think, as I said, the substance is going to be a classic and I do think that it absolutely nails what it's trying to do, being fresh, being unique, carving its own path, while, as I said, respecting the, the body horror, social commentary horror films, all the things that have come before it, I think it does such a great job in its themes. But for me personally, there are some things that just didn't quite land, unfortunately, and I think I'm going to be on an island here. Um, but the first thing to me is something that I saw in Revenge also, her other film, and it was this sort of disconnection with reality in some of the scenes, and you get that a little bit here. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about the body horror, I'm not talking about any of that stuff. What I mean is the film is grounded for the most part in its unrealistic themes, but there's like parts where I just kind of was getting distracted. Like, I don't understand why Margaret Qualley's character has like superhuman strength. She like kicks down a door. She's like dragging these insanely heavy things. Like she shouldn't be that strong. The fight scenes are insane. She like kicks, you know, Demi Moore across the room. Demi Moore's character like speed runs downstairs when she can barely walk. There's just these things that are disconnected from reality and they really took me out of the film. In addition, I really love these themes of the things that you will sacrifice and go through to keep up with this beauty standard, but yet there's no needle marks, there's no bruising from like banging your head against the ground. There's no like the crazy healing process that Demi Moore goes through, the fact that she wasn't in insane amounts of pain when you could literally see underneath her skin. I don't know, there's just, there are pieces to me that sucked me out of the film. I wish that they had, I, I feel like they could have done even more if they had really like showed the progression of how, you know, sticking a needle in your arm every single day starts to hurt, starts to, you know, bruise maybe. So you're almost like you're coming, you're getting repercussions from the things that are making you beautiful as well as the sacrificial elements. And I just felt like some of those things that were disconnected with reality kind of bothered me a little bit. And I saw that again in Revenge, they're toned down, but they just distracted me. Speaking of distracting, I just have to mention Margaret Qualley's fake boobs here. And I understand why they did it. Totally understand why they did it. They needed to show this body image that she does not have. That is this perfection concept, of course, for the film. I understand it. And of course, I do respect and appreciate the fact that they went for a actress who fit the role over a physical attribute that would fit the role. And that, of course, if they had done the other, that would have completely upended their concept of this film and the way that, you know, they're talking about this beauty standard taking over what your actual inner beauty and your uh, talent is. Of course, I, I understand why they did that, but it, I couldn't help but be distracted by the fact that she had just prosthetic boobs on. And it it just was very obvious to me and noticeable. It just was distracting. It, was, it just was distracting to me. And this is a negative, as I said. I understand why they did it. And it doesn't even look bad. You know, it's not really a negative to say that they could have even done anything else. I think it probably looks as good as it possibly could. It just was distracting to me. And so I have to throw that in there. My other negative, unfortunately, is the ending. The ending just doesn't totally work for me. And again, I think I'm going to be on an island here. But let's just let me kind of elaborate on why I don't think things in the end totally land for me. Starting with the, the moment that... Margaret Qualley's character start, or Margaret Qualley, I guess, because they're the same character, but different versions of each other. When she starts to fall apart at the end and she's losing her teeth. Now, I love that moment. I thought the concept of her literally falling apart was so cool, but I really didn't understand why she'd pull out her teeth and pull off her nail. That really took me out of it because we've got this concept that's going through this entire film of this 
absolute fear of anything happening to you, this fear of being ugly, this fear of like not being beautiful. And then she starts to pull out her teeth and I just felt like it didn't connect. Like I, to me, I think that in my opinion, it would have been a better moment if we'd seen her start to fall apart and then go through these like ridiculous things to try to like shove her teeth in and glue them in, and glue her ear on and almost tying into that sort of, you know, Botox and facelifts and these like body transformations, things that you will go through to try to stay beautiful. I think it could have tied together a lot better. In my opinion, it feels more connected with the themes and the emotional state of the characters because they are trying to keep up. They're trying to stay beautiful. So it would have made much more sense to me that she would have been shoving her teeth into her mouth, trying to not fall apart than it would be for her to pull them out. I just didn't get that. It's sort of that moment right there is the beginning of this sort of disconnection to me between the character states and the ending of the film. I also would have just, I would have liked to see more of her falling apart because it was so cool. It looked so cool. I loved when her ear fell off. Such a cool moment. I would have really enjoyed seeing more of that. Then we get to the part, of course, where she uses this fluid that isn't supposed to be used to try to create a better version of herself, which I think is very cool. And it again, ties into the theme there where it's like, it's never good enough. You still want a better version of the better version of you. Really cool concept. But then we get this monster version of Demi Moore's character, Margaret Qualley's character kind of put together, looks crazy cool, the design's awesome. But I just don't, I really was disconnected from the, the themes of this monster and the ending because the whole film, We've got this like sort of disconnect between like beauty and your emotional state and how Demi Moore is beautiful still. Like she is still beautiful at her age or whatever. She's a, obviously a very attractive looking woman, but she doesn't feel like she's pretty enough for anyone. And the same thing with, you know, Margaret Qualley's character. She's still trying to please all these people. She has to be perfect to like, go out she's sort of you know look seeking love and infection in all the wrong places and then you get this monster who like all of a sudden is like i'm beautiful and it's like looking in the mirror and you get this theme of inner beauty all of a sudden when she goes out on stage and she's like i'm the same person but the entire film has not been focused on inner beauty at all and then it just doesn't make sense to me that this different version even if it's a monster of these two characters all of a sudden thinks that it's beautiful enough to go out on stage and just puts the earrings on and puts the dress on and thinks it's pretty and it's like i'm the same me and i just it didn't work for me i didn't understand if they had some sort of tie-in with <clears throat> focusing on maybe emotional or, or inner beauty it would have worked a little better to me it was a very big jump to me to go from demi moore's character going to the mirror and putting on lipstick and putting on makeup and canceling her date and standing this man up because she doesn't feel beautiful enough to this monster who's obviously hideous and thinking it's beautiful enough to go to the New York, uh, the New Year's Eve like show and saying, it's the same me, everybody. It's the same me. And then this concept of her putting on Demi Moore's face, which again, I like that moment because you kind of get this like, tie all back together where it's like the thing that I had before was good enough. I should have just stuck with it. And I liked that moment, but I didn't quite get just this, the earrings. Maybe if there was this moment of putting the face on Demi Moore's face on first and then frantically thinking, okay, this is beautiful enough. I should have stuck with it. And then like trying to keep it when it fell off or something and saying, no, look, it's me. It's me. Like if it, if that had tied together a little more at the end where we had her like really holding to me Moore's face on and saying, it's me. Do you remember me, Elizabeth? I'm beautiful or something like that. I just didn't quite get this like moment where it's the monster saying, no, look, everybody. It just to me, it kind of lost touch with its themes throughout the film. In addition to that, I didn't like how there was these naked women dancing on this live TV. And I, I, I guess I get, I'm sure there's some sort of, I'm sure there's metaphors here I'm missing, obviously. 
And I know that there was this kind of ties in with this ridiculous uh, expectations of keeping up with how, you know, the sexualized nature of television versus then versus now and how we have to go to more and more extremes just to keep up with like there's this little girl in the audience wearing a dress and there's naked women dressing on live TV and there's all these old men who are pleasing and they're like, this is the beauty standards that the world is thinking is normal. I, I get that tie in. I just, again, kind of was like, I didn't get how she wears a jumpsuit and she's like doing this sexualized morning show. Sure. But she's not naked. And so, I, again, I'm not saying like she should have been. It just kind of was this, again, weird disconnect for me where it's like she can do this morning show in a jumpsuit and it's overly sexualized. But then they're naked on the New Year's, New Year's Eve television show. So I'm kind of, it like doesn't make sense to me that this, she is like this image of this perfection and what the world is seeking. Yet there's, there's these naked women on a live broadcast of television show also. So it's like, then that's the line that we're going to, but it looks like this, like they're trying to say, this is the line, but then they can like go past it. It just, does that make sense? You like, it kind of didn't make sense to me that there would all be all these naked women when the entire time this image of this crazy extremes that we go to is just this sort of morning show jazzercise thing, but like to extreme levels. So I kind of lost me there. In addition to that, I just didn't like how everyone kind of reacted. The audience reacted in such a weird way to me. They were like sort of staring at her and then they, it took so long for them to be like, monster and it just didn't like i guess she like gave birth or like had this piece of like a boob that fell off of her so i think that was a moment where there she was trying to show the audience and us and them that this is a real monster and not just makeup but i i just had a tough time making that leap between people thinking it's a real monster and like staring at it to like then running away and i don't know why they didn't run away sooner or if they thought it wasn't real, why they reacted the way they did. I just didn't really work for me as well as the blood shooting all over the audience. It looked really cool, but it again, thematically just didn't tie in. Everything is so intentional up to this point and these themes are all so specific. And then it really lost me at the end. I don't really get that. I, I would have appreciated more of maybe this monster running around to the little girl and saying like, no, I'm, I'm beautiful or like running around to the audience or I don't know, doing something, maybe even like, you know, I kill, not killing them, but like interacting with the audience, somehow chasing them, like locking them in I don't, something to make it seem more like seeking the attention or versus like just standing on stage and just like showering blood all everybody and then like running away and running down the all the uh, the hallway again looks really cool didn't really connect to, to the themes for me like why didn't she run away at that point and then like run out into the street i just didn't really get it like it just didn't connect for me and it didn't land unfortunately that being said i did like how it kind of went full circle with the hollywood star and the ketchup splat on you know the uh the sidewalk and how demi moore's face literally is just a splat on the sidewalk and then she just disappears and gets swept up and forgotten i thought that all tied together very well i just feel like the ending really lost touch with its themes and could have been done so much better and i feel like with just a little more tweaking here and there it could have really really connected and hit home the themes that it was going for. And I'm sure, as I said, I'm probably on an island there. Uh, I did also see this all by myself in a theater, which I normally love, but I do think that this is the type of movie, is the type of movie that would have been better with a packed theater, unfortunately. So hopefully you out there were able to see it with a bunch of people and that might've changed your viewing experience. That's my review of The Substance. And while I do have some negatives, I do think that The Substance is a, as I said, an instant classic. I think this does so many things so very well. And it, the biggest thing is that it is new and fresh while still giving us this old school monster body horror, like 80s style film. It really, really feels like it fits right in with the 80s and some of these 
older body horror films while feeling new and fresh at the same time. And boy, is that unbelievably hard to do. And yet at the still telling these grand like themes and ideas, great performances, great practical effects, amazing music, which I didn't even get into. There's so many positive things to say about the substance that I could honestly go on forever. But, you know, I just think that didn't quite tie everything together at the end. But The Substance is absolutely a film that I'm so happy that we got here in 2024 and demands to be seen. And if for some reason you watch through all these spoilers, I wish you didn't, and you haven't seen The Substance yet, go watch it because please support it. I think that a lot of people maybe are not seeing it. I Hopefully it's going to do well at the theaters because we need more films like this. And boy, was this a refreshing change of pace in 2024. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you thought of the substance down below. And let me know what your favorite aspects of this film were. Take care. I'm money scared. I'm a big bad wolf. Oh, I never see the silver line and only see the gold. I don't speak in caps, dog. Everything bold. And I put that on myself because it's a life that I done chose. I said, come through. You can see me on the west side. Now it's funny how.